Created by the very talented Sophia Grossman, White Linen is a classic. Like Chanel No. 5, it's an aldehydic floral, but I think it's more like Chanel No. 22 than No. 5. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more about it. Hello my lovelies, it's Trina. Welcome back to my channel. So I have this uh, wee 15 ml bottle of white linen. I do like the packaging of this. It's very 80s glam. The fragrance was released in 1978 and in the 80s this fragrance was everywhere and definitely decorated the skin of my mother and even sometimes myself during that decade. Mm. The perfume's name is perfect, and I do wonder which came first, the name or the formula. The aldehydes are strong, sharp, bright, and very starched. It's a multifaceted symphonic floral bouquet. Yes, it is dated, but passable for today because it's clean and crisp. This scent has a huge siege and a lot of personality, but interestingly, it was probably seen as demure when compared to other scents at the time of its release. Let's give it a tester spray here. Oh yeah. Sophia Grossman, by the way, went on to make a lot of other important perfumes, not only for Lauder, but others as well. She's done a few for, for Estee Lauder, though. Mm. The scent is colorful. White is all colors, after all. It's sunny and very soapy to my nose. And although generally I am a fan of neither aldehydes nor soapy smells, as I've already stated several times on my channel now, I actually don't mind this. Like others from Estee Lauder, this has been a staple in my mother's scent wardrobe, so the fact that it reminds me of her probably adds to my positive bias. And here are the notes, and as you might expect from a vintage concoction, there are quite a few of them. The base notes in this fragrance steer it more towards a Chypre style or Chypre style of fragrance, which is probably why I like it more than the Chanel fragrances I mentioned earlier. There's hyacinth in this and that's what gives it a punch and also dates it away a bit, I think. The, if the aldehydes make this scent sparkle, then it's the iris that gives this the uh, soft powderiness. The rest of the vibe is pure golden goodness with the tiniest tinge of some kind of spice. I think that's from the hyacinth. The image I get for this fragrance is walking through a spring garden, late spring because the sun is fairly strong, wearing crimpled linen slacks that are freshly laundered and not properly rinsed out of all the detergent. Maybe there are also some bed linens drying in the breeze behind the garden too. And the garden's near the ocean, so the air is kind of a little bit salty, and I can imagine a hot iron taken to those clean sheets later on. Perhaps they're not completely dry, a little bit damp, and that hot iron meeting the hyper-clean damp linens it's in here. <laughs> Aldehydes can make me sneeze, but so do several flowers in most gardens in my case. In this garden, all the flowers are out there and the suns warm their petals and a breeze whisks up the scent of those warm petals, pushes through the dried suds of my linen pants and then wafts up to my nostrils to say, hello. Some say this is less soapy than Chanel number no. five, but I beg to differ. Uh, I do get a crystal clear soap smell in here. And I don't mean the modern detergency types, I mean the classic soap smell. It's not unpleasant, but this perfume is strong and I much prefer it after it's settled down on my person. That There's musk at the base, which feels a little synthetic and uh, kind of adds to the soap. I don't particularly smell any obvious rose or jasmine. The muguet I can get a hint of, but mostly it's a very sharp and green, intense bouquet with a nondescript mishmash of flowers, white and purple flowers that have been jacked up with champagne and rubbed down with some soap. It gets a bit woody and grassy near the end, which gives it a more masculine feel. And yes, I do think gentlemen can wear this one. 
Mm. The fragrance has lots of obnoxious projection at the start, but it calms down and the whole fragrance on me does not last more than six hours, but I'm notoriously bad at making scents last. I've used up half of this little wee bottle, so I think I'm gonna pass on the rest to my mom, as I don't think she's worn this scent in over a decade, and it's deserving of a look back, I think. Overall, I don't feel it's the most modern smelling scent out there, although you can still pull it off. But if you don't care for vintage style formulations or blinding aldehydes, I think you'll probably want to give this one a pass. Okay, my lovelies, I hope you enjoyed my review. Do like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in my next video. Mwah.